umpire. Card number 54 is missing out quite a bit. And Mel Kenyon, the USAC officials down the way from me, are keeping a very close uh, watch on car number 94. Mel Kenyon right now. So you may watch. He may be coming into the pits uh, and may be out of the race pretty soon. Let's don't take him out yet, though. He is still going around this two-and-a-half-mile oval, and I'm sure would like to finish. Back to you, Sid, in the tunnel. All right. Thank you, Ron. We're in the 145th lap now. 140 laps or 350 miles standings. We can read to you. 144.044 was the average speed. Speed, and the lineup, pretty much where we left it before, number 14, Lloyd Ruby, the leader, 19, Jimmy Clark, second, 18, Al Unser, moving into third, 43, Jackie Stewart, fourth, number three, Jim McElroy, fifth, 24, Graham Hill, sixth, 72, Gordon Johncock, seventh, 94, Mel Kenyon, eighth, number six, Joey Leonard, ninth, 54, Eddie Johnson, tenth, 88, Jerry Grant, eleventh, and number 11, Bobby Answer, 12. 12 cars running at that time at 140 laps or 350 miles. Speed 144.044 and time 2 hours, 25 and 4700 minutes. Now to the center pit and Luke Walton. Sit one of the outstanding drivers ever to come to the 500-mile speedway is Parnelli Jones. And here's another disappointment. Parnelli, when did you find out about the towel being in the nozzle? Actually, I didn't find out about it until uh, I got back to the pits. Uh, I knew that there was something wrong with the office, you know, my car, and they had to get the other one and uh, finish the job. And, uh, of course, uh, when I got back to the pit, they showed me that there was a rag stuck in the nozzle. Was there anything else wrong with the car, or what did that do to harm the car? Well, actually, I've never done anything to harm the car. I lost a wheel bearing, and uh, which uh, caused me to lose the brakes, and... Uh, I just pulled it in and parked it. Well, you're going to continue racing throughout the year, are you not, Parnelli? Oh, yeah, I'll probably run some of the championship races. Thank you very much, Parnelli Jones, and now back to this All right, Luke, thanks. Good to hear from Parnelli anytime. Top prize money now after 140 laps for 350 miles. Andretti led 1 through 16 for $2,400. Clark 17 to the 86 lap for $10,500. Ruby lap 87 to 133 for 7,050, and Clark 134 to 140 for another $1,050. Total $21,000, and Lloyd Ruby regained the lead on the 141st lap. Now to the number one turn, and Mike Ahern. And we see smoke coming from the rear of the car driven by Lloyd Ruby. One time around earlier, just entering the second turn, down from us here, a thin line of blue smoke from the rear of the car, and then a heavier line around this number one term on this trip around. So, Sid, maybe we can follow him around and see what the trouble is. Back to you in the tower. Well, we have Pat Bedan with a black flag out there, and that may be it. Len, did you see a number on the board as yet, or are they just waiting? Yes, I saw number 14, but they're not showing it yet, so I'm quite sure that the officials will want to make sure any time that you pull in that leader, you want to be pretty sure that, that he is leaking oil. Car 19 with Clark pitted on lap 145 for 22 seconds for fuel. And car 11, Bobby Unser pitted on lap 147 for fuel for 55 and 8, 10 seconds. There's the black flag now for number 14, and they're calling Lloyd Ruby in, and he's in the lead. They're bringing him in. Black flag for Lloyd Ruby. Jerry Grant back in the pits once again. A long day for him. Did your blimp is walking himself slowly, moving around overhead. It's a pretty sight, isn't it? The speed down here, it looks like it's hardly moving at all up there. Ruby will come in. That will give us a new leader in Jackie Stewart running in second right now. That will put him in the position of uh, bringing the lead momentarily. We're on the 149th lap. Bill Friedemeyer and Bill Lamb over there will check me. 149th lap of the correct round. Be very careful about that. That's what I have nightmares about during the year, is getting a wrong lap for the winner of this race one of these days. But when they spread out like this and begin the last one, nothing coming for a very pit stop. So we get ourselves very interested in keeping as accurate as we possibly can. A lot of veterans didn't start the race this year. We didn't have Bill Cheeseburg in the field, or Bob Bites, or Bob Christie, Eb Rose, Dempsey Wilson, Bobby Johns, Art Malone, Paul Goldsmith, Judd Larson, or Len Sutton. And now Ruby coming in for his stop. And can you pick it up down there, Lou Palmer? It's a considerable distance from us, but we can get an indication, perhaps, of the USAC official and what he has to say uh, through the hand signals that they use. We just had a thumbs down a short time ago for Roger McCluskey, 
They're looking it over now, and really there is nothing Ruby apparently needs in the way of service from the crew, but they are having a consultation, and it's getting rather intensive. A few hands being waved in the air, as I say, at some distance. No way to overhear the conversation that's going on now, but Ruby is still very much in that pit and not out on the track, and this isn't going to protect the lead by any means. So Lloyd Ruby still there, still, still in the pit area. The crew looking it over, but no decision yet whether or not to let him go. So I think we'll turn loose at this time, and you'll see whether or not he can get pushed away and back into contention or not. They're still checking it, Sid. Keep a close eye on it, Lou, if you will, and thanks for looking over that crowd. From up here, we can only see the people around the car and can't see the car, and I guess you can from the other side because there are 300,000 people here, and it gives the appearance of uh, half of them around the race car when they come in the pits from up here, although I will say that the area is pretty well, very well policed today. Now back to Lou Palmer in the south pit. And this is the information. Lloyd Ruby reluctantly is unbuckled, is out of the car, standing alongside. He hasn't taken, now he's taking the helmet off. That would seem to be that. Lloyd Ruby retiring after leading this race more than in contention. He looked like he was on his way, but now the blue helmet being set aside and the car will be wheeled back to the garage area. Sid. Lloyd Ruby out of the race, and Jackie Stewart now in the lead in car number 43, the Bose Seal Fast Special from Dumbarton, Oak, Scotland, driving a lowly Ford, started 11th. Dave Schneider is his chief mechanic, and is entered by John Meekham, Jr., in the same stable with Roger Ward and Graham Hill. Stewart now leading in car number 43, and Ruby was black flagged to come in at the end of the 152nd lap. Car number six, Joey Leonard pitted on lap 135 for fuel and right front tire for 31 seconds. 94, Mel Kenyon pitted on lap 137 for fuel for 33 seconds. Eddie Johnson, 54, pitted on lap 137 for fuel system repair. Car three, Jim McElwee pitted on lap 139 for fuel. Had to restart the engine, took a minute and 36 seconds. And car 72, Gordon Johncock stopped on lap 141 for fuel for 32 and 6 tenths seconds. And we give you all this information because there are many people who keep very elaborate charts. Occasionally they send me a copy of these and they have every bit of information that we give out here. So we give it for them. I know a great number of you don't keep that much information. Great Rex Mays led nine races here, but never won one of them. This happened to many drivers who've tried for years and years. Again, here's John DeCan. Sid, I just clocked the new leader, Jackie Stewart, at just over 150 miles an hour. He didn't... Uh, quite take the full 60 seconds to turn his last lap, which was the 150th lap of the race. Jackie Stewart is the leader, and uh, he's followed by Jimmy Clark. Sid? John, we'll keep a very close tab on the speed of these boys and see if they're going to slow down, because when you get ahead like this, we have about 49 laps to go. If you can hold on keep that car in shape, there's a good chance you can pull it out of the fire. This will be a little bit of a surprise win for whomever may win this race right now, unless it's Jimmy Clark. Jimmy Clark, the three race favorite, and he's on the track and has done a fantastic job today, as reported by our various broadcasters around the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, and the fact he's had cars spinning four times and still moving. We'd hope to have uh, Andy Granatelli, another car owner up here, to be on the broadcast. I see him walking by right now in his SCP red jacket down that way, but I'm sure he won't want to be coming up while he has cars still running in the field, and he has them both out there in the uh, Al Unser, or Bobby uh, Al Unser, pardon me, and uh, Jimmy Clark. Well, let's swing around to the number one turn and pick up our points once again. Things are very quiet up here at the moment. Mike Ahern. Sid, it's getting a little slick here at number one right now. Of course, that's to be expected this late in the race. The drivers are having a little trouble gripping the wheel coming around here. A couple have shimmied a bit. Al Unser coming out of the number one turn. Uh, I won't say he got a quarter sideways. This car really didn't slide that bad. If he just a bit, he'd be able, was able to grip that wheel and get it straightened out. So it's getting a little slick here. They're riding up a little higher in the groove right now, and the wind has picked up considerably. Now back to you in the top. All right, thank you. And now, Hottie Bell in turn number two. The wind has picked up considerably, I imagine, all over the track. Uh, at least it's quite evident here in turn two also. But uh, in watching uh, Jackie Stewart, he's very smooth through the second corner here at the southeast turn, and everything looks fine. Back to you, Sid. All right, now to the back stretch, and Doug Zink. All right, thank you, Sid, and Jackie Stewart increases his lead very steadily over second place Jimmy Clark here. 
You might uh, check Sid with the Donald Davidson, but uh, if Jackie Stewart should win, I think he'll be the first rookie winner since uh, George Souders in 1927 and almost a sure shoe in for the Rookie of the Year honors. Stewart looking very good here on the back stretch at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. Back to you in the car. All right, Doug, and number six, Joey Leonard, the Yamaha Eagle, coming in for a pit stop right in front of us once again, so we'll keep a close watch on that. They're changing the right rear tire, apparently, but no uh, refueling that I can see, and the right front tire as well on number six, Joey Leonard, and the Yamaha Eagle. We will swing around to turn number three and pick up Ron Carroll. All right, so here for three, we're watching a very interesting battle once again, this time going on between Graham Hill and Jim McElreath. Graham Hill in the American Red Bull, car number 24, leading Jim McElreath, car number three, by about, I would say, perhaps a half and maybe one car length. Yeah, he has stayed in front of McElreath all the way, at least uh, to what we've been heard. But a very nice race underway between those. They are right now getting into a little traffic, two cars ahead of them, and so perhaps uh, McElroy, whom I'm sure would like to get ahead of Hill, uh, may have his opportunity right now. We'll watch it. Graham Hill, Jim McElroy, the close battle. Back to you, Sid, in the dark. All right, about 30 seconds now for turn number four and Jim Shelton. Thanks very much, Sid. It's a great race. Jackie Stewart just seems to be uh, having his car as part of this track. There's no fishtail at all. He is driven uh, an exceptionally good race through these turns up here, and that might be uh, some of the difference at least. A couple of things here, Sid, that you might mention now and then. A lot of paper is being thrown on this track, and it is very dangerous, and a lot of people are listening to us with uh, transistor radio, so mention it now and then to wad up the paper and not just throw it out flat. Thank you very much. Back to you, Sid. Okay, Jim. It's now 3 o'clock in Indianapolis. We'll be back in one minute. Stay tuned for the greatest spectacle in racing. Lloyd Ruby has gotten back into the cockpit and going back on the racetrack once again in his race car at number 14, which is quite a surprise. Alongside me here is Duke Nalen, who participated in 10 500-mile races from the pole here in 1951 and a member of the Autolite Pacemaker Club, which is a group of exclusive gentlemen who have led this 500-mile race. Duke, I think for the first time in a couple of years, had a chance to get some new members, won't you? Yes, we do have. We have four of them here today already, sir. That's uh, Andretti, Ruby, Snyder, and Stewart, the new members for the 66 Pacemaker Club. I've asked a lot of our guests here today, Duke, because they've seen a race quite as wide open and strange as this one before, have you? No, uh, I really haven't in uh, all my days that I've been here at the racing at uh, Indianapolis. And another thing is to be leaving this race and pulled in because of uh, dropping oil. That would be a heartbreak to me. Well, there have been a lot of heartbreaks here today, particularly the boys in the very first lap. Yes, there sure was. I was sorry to see that happen. And I was in the first turn, and however, with all the dust and everything, it was hard to just difficult to see what went on. Mm -hmm. Thanks for stopping by, Duke. Thank you very much, Good to see you. Right. Duke Nalen is working here with uh, Autolite this month, as a matter of fact, and one of the great drivers of all time. Well, he had the standings here at 375 miles and 150 laps. The speed of 144.432 miles per hour. Number 43, Stewart, holds that speed and was a leader at 375 miles, or 150 laps, we're in the 160th lap now. Second, number 19, Jimmy Clark. 18, Al Unser was third. So the two STP cars, the bright STP red of Graham Kelly's, are running second and third. Number 24, Graham Hill, American Red Bull Special, is fourth. Number three, Jim McElroy, the Zinc Urshaw Slick Special, fifth. 72, Gordon Johncock, Weinberger Holmes, sixth. 94, Mel Kenyon, the Gerhardt Special, 7th. 
Number six, Joey Leonard, the Yamaha Eagle, eight. Number 54, Eddie Johnson, the Valvoline Special, ninth, 88. Jerry Grant is running 10th in the Bardall Special. We have 10 cars by this figure I have, Len, still running at this time, if that agrees with, with your uh, notes over there. Yes, I believe it is 10 cars at this time. I'm, I'm continuing to check the spacing between these cars. Uh, between Jackie Stewart now and Jimmy Clark, there is about 24 seconds, so he has actually stretched out his lead. But between Al Unser and Jimmy Clark, it has narrowed down uh, to nine seconds between second and third. I also saw another startling development uh, with uh, uh, Al Unser, uh, Gordon Johncock, a man driving number 72, who hasn't really been uh, mentioned too many times today, passed Al Unser on the front straightaway. Now, I don't know whether he's unlapping himself or what, but uh, he is traveling at a faster rate of speed than Al at the present time. Well, it's nice to see some new leaders and see a race that does bring about some new excitement for us. Last year, we had uh, Clark leading 190 laps and Foyt 10 laps, and this year, we haven't known where we stood going into the next, and we found out in a hurry, but it's been changing rapidly. Here's John DeCamp again. Floyd Ruby's back out on the track, Sid, as you know, and I just clocked him at 150 miles an hour on the first full lap he took after coming out of the pits for a rather lengthy pit stop to uh, repair an oil leak, Sid. We have uh, drivers here in this event when it started today. <laughs> There's Jerry Grant going back again. That roar you hear, he's having trouble getting the car moving. There he goes. And it is going. It sounds as though it may die, but it's still moving. Now he's back in the pit area, moving back on the apron. The driver's hitting from 13 states and three other countries. Clark and Stewart, of course, from Scotland. Van Hill from London. Billy Foster from Canada, British Columbia, Vancouver. Masson Gregory is here this month. Didn't make the field. He's from Paris originally from Kansas City. Then we had nine drivers from California, three from Texas, two from Ohio, two Illinois, New Mexico, Indiana, one from Arizona, three from Michigan, and one each from North Carolina, Missouri, Iowa, New York, and Pennsylvania. Car number six, Joey Leonard, pitted on lap 156 for right rear tire and fuel for 43 seconds. Car 14, Lloyd Ruby pitting on lap 152 to replace a cam on the oiling system and got some fuel in seven minutes and 52 seconds. Ruby, seven minutes, 52 seconds. What a bad break to go out when you're in the lead like that. He blocked flag to come in, as it was mentioned here just a few moments ago. Oh, in the 163rd lap now, and Jackie Stewart holds the lead with Jimmy Clark second, and Al Unser third, in that order. Those field fast cars again flying here at the 500 with the signing of Jackie Stewart to drive their rear engine car. And owner John Meekin Jr. and Bob Bowes Signed the agreement which brought Bose back to racing after a year layout. Joey Bignotti, master mechanic, supervising the preparation of the car. Now we have a yellow flag once again. Yellow flag, where is it, boys? Number four, Jim Shelton. We're down in the pit area, Sid. It's the top of the pits down there. Head of the pits. Oh, Chuck Marlowe come in the north pit. Yes, uh, Sid, it's one of the SCP cars. And uh, another car out of shape hits the wheel. Looks like Jimmy McElroy, uh that hit the wheel. McElroy got through all right after handling it pretty well, but we're still trying to tell whether it's number 18 or number 19. Uh, it is one of the SCP cars from here, Sid, according to paint and code. Uh, the safety trucks are out there right now. Another one's moving up from the number four turn. It's, there's about uh, 400 yards from us. Our best view is the fact that it is one of the SCP sponsored rear engine Lotus Sports, either number 18 or number 19. We're waiting for one or the other one to come by. Here comes one right now. Let's check and see who it is. Clark is by. It's Alan. It's 18, Chuck. 19 just came by at the starting line. That's right. Jimmy Clark just passed me, so it's number 18, Alan, sir. He's against the wall. We cannot tell if he is out of the car, yep, or not, Sid. Uh, until further verification, if you want me to, I'll leave my post. Let's do that, Chuck. Going to run down, come back. Al Unser from Albuquerque, New Mexico, 27 years of age. Had been in uh, one previous race here, finished ninth in 1965, and he's a member of the illustrious racing family, particularly at Pikes Peak, where... The Unser boys, Bobby and Al and the rest of the gang, seem to win that every year, almost every year, driving a Lotus Ford Range in the STP Oil Treatment Special. Mr. Andy Granatelli 
Entrant here this year, served by Colin Chapman. Al Unser, just coming out of the number four turn and across from the pit entrance. From uh, our vantage point here, he right down there by the pit entrance. And as uh, Jim Shelton, Chuck Marlowe explained, number three, Jim McElroy, negotiated the excitement down there and got away from a flying wheel, apparently. Jim McElroy, Marlington, Texas, driving a Brabham by Moore car, holding on. The wheel's about 60 yards up the track from the wreck, leaning right against the outside wall, just leaning there. Kind of a freak situation that rolled and stopped over there, leaning against the wall about a half a mile from us. We have the glasses on it from all of the points here. We want to be sure about the condition of the driver and see if he gets out of the car. No report as yet. So at the present time, this has been one of the strangest, weirdest, most unusual, and still, as far as injuries are concerned, up to this moment, safest 500 we've had. But there are only nine cars running now with Unser out. And as I mentioned earlier, some people had predicted to me that eight or less would finish this race. And that's exactly what is happening thus far. Race is running smoothly at the moment with the yellow flag. They're not going very fast. John DeCamp will be making a check of how many rookies we have running, too. The next time he gets an opportunity, maybe I can help him check onto that here myself. We have Jackie Stewart, of course, who's a rookie and in the lead. Clark is far from a rookie now, having proved himself here at the Speedway for several years. Graham Hill is running in fourth place, is a rookie. And that pretty well takes care of it. Yellow flag is still out. Stewart, a week ago yesterday, won the Grand Prix at Monaco. Graham Hill came in third, and uh, Jimmy Clark dropped out of the race due to mechanical trouble. So Stewart again is uh, repeating what he did just eight days ago. I'll call in Donald Davidson here during this yellow flag and see if he has any comment to add. And if not, Don, it's certainly okay because things have been a little quiet up to the time of this bang of uh, Al Unser's. Now back to Chuck Marlowe in the North Pit. Chuck. Yes, yes. Uh, forgive me for being a little bit out of breath. Al is okay. He is all right. He's out of the car. The ambulance has taken him back. Uh, close to the entrance to the pit. And uh, he's circling out. He got out of the ambulance. Went with the USAC officials. But he is all right. Now back to you, Sid. Chuck, thank you. Al Unser officially now hit the wall in the fourth turn. The leader's 164th lap. And a couple of drivers not named here. One apparently was Michael Reef. Did some top driving to avoid a flying wheel. Unser has gotten out of the car. And as Chuck has reported to you, he is all right. Now, at the end of 400 miles, or 160 laps, the speed, 144.106 miles per hour, with Stewart setting that speed, not a record, 151.145 last year by Jimmy Clark is still the record. 144.106 at 400 miles, with 100 miles to go, and less than that now, we have uh, about 165 laps with the leader on the leading lap for 165. 43, Jackie Stewart first, 19, Jimmy Clark second, 18 at that moment, Al Unser third, 24, Graham Hill fourth, number three, Jim McElroy fifth, 72, Gordon Johncock sixth, 94, Mel Kenyon seventh, 14, Lloyd Ruby eighth, six, Joey Leonard ninth, 54, Eddie Johnson tenth, and 88, Jerry Grant eleventh. Now let's call in just a moment. Here's Len Sutton on the north wing of the tower. Len, come in. Yes, uh, Al Unser's car is in, in tow. They're bringing it into the, nor into the north end of the pit. Uh, it looks to be very badly damaged. Uh, it's under a, a carriage, uh, which supports the entire weight. It's not able to even be towed under any of its own wheels. The car looks to be severely damaged. Not to you, sir. Thank you, Len. We put that microphone out there last year and use it again this year because it's outside on the very end of the north part of the tower here. And with the crowd inside, we occupy the south west portion of this tower. And we cannot see through this crowd, but with Len out there with that mic, he can pick it up. Now back to the north pit once again, and Chuck Marlowe. Right, Sid, as the car goes by, number 18, the LCP special, the entire left side of that car has been wiped out. 
The entire left side's been wiped out. But remember again, Al uh, Unzor is all right. You're getting a good shot of the car right now. Ted, back to you. All right, Chuck. And now we have uh, Donald Davidson back in to give any analysis he has this moment for a few seconds or two. Yeah, everybody is uh, thinking that this is the first time that Europeans have run in first three places. This did happen back in 1914 when Frenchmen finished in first four places driving French cars. Jackie Stewart driving a Bose Steel France Special. Bose cars previously won in 1931 with Louis Schneider, 1961 with uh, A.J. Foyt. Mrs. Unser was rubbing her hands with her, her boys in the top, both of them in the top ten. And I'm not sure, I think that even with Alan out, he still may get tenth place. All those drivers that were in the first lap accident, they will now share the dubious honor of having covered the least distance in the race. Previously, George Lynch held this. He spun between the first and second turns in the first lap in 1949. And of the four drivers that have led, Jackie Stewart, Lloyd Ruby, and Mario Andretti have never led before. Jim Clark, the other one, has led the previous three races and incidentally has now led the four races that he has been in. Thank you, Don. Okay. Come back and see us a little bit later. Chuck Barnes has dropped by here for a moment. Chuck is a gentleman who represents some of these drivers around the nation in various activities of theirs. And I imagine, Chuck, that your heart must have popped to your mouth as the rest of us, but maybe even more personally than many because you've been so close to the boys and wondering what would have happened in the first turn. Well, it was quite a shock to see so many of the out so early. And, of course, as you know, this is a year-long thing. They look forward to it every year. But I must say that it looks like Indianapolis is going to be the greatest thing that's happened to Scotland's economy. <laughs> and fortunately for me, why, uh, I do represent Jackie Stewart over here in the United States. So if he keeps going well, why, may be all right. Good, a fine young man. Yeah. Yeah. That was good thinking, Chuck. Thank you very Thank much. Chuck, bye. Now stay tuned for the greatest spectacle in racing. The green flag is out once again. We're back into racing speed as they roar by. And there's Lloyd Ruby, followed by Eddie Johnson, but not in that particular order. The race, of course, is strung out so much now we cannot tell by their position in the track, their position in the standings. We're in 170 second laps. We're getting down closer and closer to the wire with Jackie Stewart holding on in the Bose fast car. Jackie Stewart, Dunbarton, Scotland third ranking driver in the 1965 Grand Prix competition. This is a Lola T90, a modified version of the 1965 T80. The major modifications include complete revision of front and rear suspension geometries. The builder is Eric Broadley. And the engine, a Ford V8 289 basic component with the designer Ryan Faulkner. John Meekin, the car owner, making his first run here, having for several years been closely connected with sports car competition. And he has Ward, or had Ward, running here under his banner. And now Graham Hill is still in the track, so it's been a good start for the Meekum team this year. Green flag is out. So while we're catching up on what's going on around the racetrack, let's do it by virtue of our very fine broadcasters. Number one, come in Mike Ahern. Thank you, Sid. I just noticed Jerry Grant, that fluorescent green nose, that uh, bright blue car pull out of the pit area. Unless I'm mistaken, Jerry has been off the track here for some time. He is back in competition once again. Things going smoothly here in turn number one. The sun is back out again, and the wind has died down just a bit. Back to you in the tower, Sid. All right, Mike. And number two, Howdy Bell. 
Thank you, Sid. We'd like to mention uh, rookie Mel Kenyon uh, in this Lavender Gerhard off the number 94. Even though his engines run sour, uh, he seems to be moving along pretty well out here and still sticking to it. You know, Mel uh, recovered from that serious accident at Langhorn and is doing very nicely. Every, other, everything is uh, running pretty smoothly through the southeast turn. Turn two, Sid. Yes, he's doing a great job. As you know, Mel lost to fingers from his left hand is driving with a fitted piece that allows him to drive and negotiate very well. And years ago, a great driver, Alan Heath, drove without a hand at all to Milan. Yes, and did a very fine job. Because of the last yellow flag, I just noticed that there's been a quite a, uh, a spacing now between uh, uh, Jackie Stewart and the rest of the field. And he has almost a full lap lead on Jimmy Clark uh, in number 19. Well, that's a reversal of form for Clark, who had the lead of several laps last year on everybody else. Car 88, Grant, pitted on lap 164 to adjust his Magneto for five minutes and 48 seconds. And car six, Joey Leonard, pitted on lap 170 for fuel for 13 and one-half seconds. Let's continue now around the track to the backstretch and Doug Zink. All right, thank you, Sid. Well, the fans here have seen just about everything today in this 500-mile race. A few of them seem to be just waiting now until the last 30 or 40 laps are over. A few people are even moving toward the exits. And uh, we notice that uh, it's a shame that Lloyd Ruby did sit in the pits for a few laps because his, uh, his car seemed to be functioning quite well right now and they're giving a good ride to uh, car number 14. Sid, back to you in the tower. All right, Doug. Ruby has gone back into the garage, as you mentioned to us, the trouble with his automobile. Now we're having a number of cars coming down here. It looks like the start of a race now. There are five bunch together, and 200 yards back, one more, and now nothing for almost a full straightaway. So that's the way it is when they streak out like this and stretch themselves one to the other this late in the race. But they could be trouble bunch that close together. Remember, Roger McCluskey spinning in the what, last lap or next lap a few years ago. Very true. Uh, the competition that close when you see three cars coming down the front straightaway and none of them really wanting to back off, uh, you, you're going to look for action. And, and that was very close. Uh, you couldn't really tell who, who went in the corner first. Well, you certainly can't object to not having action today, can you? There's been more action. I, I didn't realize there was so much action uh, on the racetrack. You don't see all this. <laughs> you see what's happening right in front of you. And up here, what's happening all around you, you just can't turn fast enough. And what is your feeling now that you've done uh, almost all this race, 176 laps right now, and Stewart's holding on this lead? Well, I think I made a good choice when I decided to uh, to pull out. Believe me, after seeing the start the way it was uh, here today and imagining yourself somewhere in that pack and wondering what would have happened, it could have been you, and you could have been right underneath the, the pile. So I think I made a good decision when I did, and my wife agrees. Well, we think you made a good one joining us up here, too, then. At 170 laps, or 425 miles, 143.864 was the speed. The old record, 151.092, set last year by Jim Clark. And the standings, car number 43, Jackie Stewart first, 19, Jimmy Clark second, 24, Graham Hill third, number three, Jim McElroy fourth, 72, Gordon Johncock fifth, 94, Mel Kenyon sixth, 14, Lloyd Ruby, 7th, number 6, Joey Leonard, 8th, 54, Eddie Johnson, 9th, 11, Bobby Unser, 10th, and 88, Jerry Grant, 11th. We have less than 25 laps to go. Here's John DeCamp. Bill Fledemeyer just pointed out to me that Jackie Stewart turned the last lap at 153.3 miles an hour unofficially. And he has almost a full lap lead over the second and third placer, Jimmy Clark and Graham Hill, but still starts pouring it on. As a matter of fact, he is now a lap second place, Jimmy Clark. And the, that three-man three, uh, three -man race that was going into the corner, uh, uh, Jackie Stewart was one of the three. The uh, closest finish ever here was back in 19... Um, no correction. I just wasn't going to say it all right. What I had in mind was leading the race from start to finish. Uh, and Billy Arnold in 1930 took the lead in the third lap and held on to it. And Louis Meyer led the first two in 1912. And Ralph De Palma took the lead in the third lap and led to the 199th lap. With one lap to go, Joe Dawson led. So he led the first lap and the last lap and won the race. And last year, Clark led all but 10. Drivers in this race this year who had led before were Jones, Point, Clark, Herdebees, Boyd, Len Sutton, who's alongside me today, McCluskey, 
and Roger Ward, plus Charles Deaton and Billy Givad, who will be joining the new pacemaker club this year. His roadster didn't get a chance to prove anything with Bobby Graham. It went out in the accident. First roadster came here back in 1952 with Bill Vukovic. First laydown engine came with George Sally. Brabham brought the rear engine here. Things haven't been the same since. Yes, Len. I believe at this moment, with first, second, and third position, are not running more than four or five seconds apart, except that they're all a lap apart. They're one, one lap between first and second, and the leader has two laps over third, and yet the three of them are running within three or four seconds of one another. With the names of these cars, uh, one would think this is going to become a Navy area or a zoo one of these days. Uh, A.J. Foyt called his car the Coyote, and then when he banged that one up in the time trials, he changed the new one to a Coyote-eyed Lotus. Andretti called his car a Hawk. Barnelli called his a Shrike. So I don't know what we're going to have here next year. Gurneys are eagles. He's threatening to take a bite out of the tailpipe with a car in front of him. But the boys are getting very colorful with the names of their automobiles. We're on the 179th lap now. And uh, since we're getting close to the end, let's try to pick up our leader as he comes around the next time and follow him around the track. There won't be too much to say because the track is pretty wide open and things are going rather smoothly. But we'll wait for Jackie Stewart to come back here once again and follow him around once. And if he still holds on, we'll follow the white flag back. Again, on the back stretch, here's Doug Zink. All right, thank you, Sid. And Joy Leonard has come to a halt just to the north end of the back stretch here. Car number six, the Yamaha Eagle. Uh, Joy Leonard, car number six, has come to a halt. Joy was looking down into the cockpit of his car, and it looks like now he's climbing out of the automobile, apparently having uh, problems here with this automobile. Sid, back to you in the tower. Thank you, Doug, and I think that uh, Mike Ahern probably just saw Jackie pass him. Mike? Uh, just it, Sid, just a couple of seconds ago. He's in turn two now. Let's follow him around, howdy. He's through turn two and spreading out to the outside wall, going up that back stretch. He ought to be right near Doug Zink. All right, thank you, howdy. Here he goes. The past our vantage point, looking very smooth as he flies down the back stretch here and into turn number three and into the vantage point of Ron Carroll. All right, Doug, and I have him in view. He moves into number three. And now Howden, number three, on to the short shoot, driving a very nice race into number four, Jim Shelton. And here he comes, Ron, just as cool, calm, and collected as he has been all the way through this race. He was in a bit of traffic here all about uh, five or six laps ago, but he's cleared that, and he's down the home stretch right now and near the finish line, and here's Sid Collins. Thank you, Jim. You know, uh, prior to last year, no car numbered between... Uh, 36 and 98 between, not inclusive of, 36 and 98 had never won the race. Last year, number 82, Jimmy Clark did it. So we changed our figures. And this year, no car between 36 and 82 had ever won the race. And Stewart is driving 43. So these fellows come over here from Scotland, and they change things around <laughs> quite a bit. And, of course, that's the fun of racing, isn't it? The lap money now, Andretti won $2,400. Clark, 7,200. There's Grant coming back in. He's had a long day in the pits, number 88 in his Bardall car. Jerry Grant back in the pits again. Clark won 7,200 uh, for leading lap 17 to 64. Another 1,650 for leading lap 76 to 86. And he led again from 134 to 140 for another 1,050 dollars. Ruby led from 65 to 75 for 1,650. Again from 87 to 133 for 7,050. And from last 141 to 150 for 1500. So a total for 150 laps in lap prize money, $22,500. Stewart now leading Jimmy Clark by three and seven tenths seconds. Jackie Stewart, car number 43, the Bose Seal Fast Special. The white car with black and red trim, a rear engine Ford, with Dave Schneider as the chief mechanic. Now we're now in the 182nd lap, and people seem to be. Enjoying the finish, the race, waiting in eager anticipation. Len? It would appear as though the stand, the uh, standings at this moment it could be Jackie Stewart first, Graham Hill second, Jimmy Clark third, and Jim McAreeth fourth. Well, that would be something, wouldn't it? Yes, it would. Uh, three uh, foreign drivers running one, two, three. For a school dropout who moved from obscurity in the family garage business to worldwide prominence, and dinners with royalty in the last two years, Stewart has certainly a lot of poise and humility. We've had the chance of chatting with him often during this month of May, and I've been much impressed with this young man. Two years ago, Jackie gave a place on the Scottish Olympic team as a trap shooter, 
to pursue auto racing. And he's uh, certainly thrilled with his profession and probably more so today than ever. His abilities for the sport even amazes him, he says. But of course, he's aware of the dangers involved in racing. He says it's not the safest of occupation. And uh, I just think I know what I'm doing. And I'm not an Eaton or Harrow man. I left school at 15. I certainly wasn't dull, but I wasn't too bright in the family owned a small garage business. I'm quoting Jackie now. And he was always interested in motor cars, so it seemed a logical thing to do. And he said he's had dinner with the Duke of Kent, and royalty often goes to Grand Prix races. So he says, I think you pick up some polish. And that's not all he's going to pick up today. So the prize melon for the winning team probably of well over $150,000, 160 plus. He didn't know Jimmy Clark until he started racing, and uh, he said that he enjoys very much racing against him. We're in the 183rd lap now, and the lead is three minutes and seven, ten seconds with nine cars still running at this time. We've had national champions win the race before. Many people thought that Mario Andretti might do it today as a national champion, but he wasn't able to. His boy had very bad racing luck with his car fuming and spreading early in the event. Here at 450 miles or 180 laps, the speed 144.2. 261 miles an hour, 144.261 miles per hour. And the record last year was Jim Clark at 150.996, six miles plus per hour faster. 43, Jackie Stewart first, 24, Graham Hill second, 19, Jimmy Clark third, number three, Jim McElroy fourth, 72, Gordon John Cox fifth, 94, Mel Kenyon sixth, 54, Eddie Johnson seventh, Number 11, Bobby Unser, 8. And number 88, Jerry Grant, 9. And uh, Grant is running a lot, Len, if you pardon me, like you did last year. He's fighting for that position to keep going there, but spending much time in the pits, isn't he? Very much so. And at this moment, it's a good idea to stay in if, it's, if it's at all possible. Finish as many laps as possible. I remember also last year when uh, uh, Lloyd Ruby uh, was able to drop out of the race and never finished the last uh, 10 or 12 minutes, and still he finished ahead of me because he completed more laps than I did. So you want to stay out there and complete all the laps possible. Well, friend, we'll be back in 60 seconds. Now stay tuned for the greatest spectacle in racing. The final quarter hour of The Greatest Spectacle in Racing is brought to you by Goodyear. This year, as in every year, for 51 consecutive years, more people ride on Goodyear tires than on any other kind. And by Autolite, makers of quality ignition parts for road and track. We've just noticed that Jackie Stewart pointed toward the rear part of his race car as he came by. I'm not certain if he pointed toward a tire or some other malfunction or just a gesture that was misinterpreted. But we'll see the next time he comes around. He's leading in 188th lap. Car 88. Have a flame coming out of the back of a car down there. It appeared when he came around. Pick that up, Mike Ahern. Is there something about that car? Well, that's Eddie Johnson in car 54. Uh, said he's been having a lot of trouble with his engine sputtering earlier. I see no flame, but he's slowing down considerably. As a matter of fact, his wheels now are on the track apron, and he will probably uh, either be coming in or come to a halt up back on the back stretch. Yes, he is slowing down now. Back to you in the tower, Sid. All right, you know, Bob Beith uh, had a car almost burn up on him here during the time trials. Here's Jim Shelton, the number four turn. Uh, Sid, uh, it's a man that was uh, scratched a little bit earlier, and uh, I don't know where he came from, but it's Joey Leonard who was running his car around here, and finally it did just up and quit in the number four turn. So he's out. He's disgusted. He's walking down the track right now. Back to you, Sid. 
All right, Jim, thank you. I don't know where he came from either. We had the report he was also out of the race, they thought, at that time. Well, Clarence Cagle will have a big job when this program is over, cleaning up these 500 and some acres of ground. Yesterday, Arnold Palmer and Doug Sanders played some golf out here, and this has been a very gala month with the 500 festival activities. At a mayor's breakfast, opening day of the track, uh, Derwood Kirby was MC for the mayor's breakfast. We had a racing awards and Paul McCann's banquet coronation ball parade with 350,000 people lined in the streets. Memorial services, and it's been a great time. Walter Cronkite uh, was the parade marshal on Saturday evening. And, of course, the race here winds up the activities up for a golf tournament coming up in July. We have 199 laps. We're coming in toward the checkered flag with just a little over 10 laps to go. And we're going to check on Jackie Stewart very carefully as he comes by this next time to see if he signals anything. Then you might see if you notice anything about the car at all. I just checked his time, and he turned a lap at about 147 miles an hour, which is at least five miles an hour off the pace. I also noticed that Al Unser went by him, or one of the STP, I mean, it was Jimmy Clark, I'm sorry, the STP car drove by him. Now, he's unlapping himself, undoubtedly. Well, this could be a real wild finish, couldn't it? It could be if he's having problems because a pit stop, although it may only take uh, 15 seconds to actually uh, uh, work on the car, it takes time to decelerate and then move back out of the pit. So you can it'll almost cost you three quarters of a lap to make a normal pit stop. Well, then Clark isn't out of this one yet, is he? Definitely not. Nor Graham Hill. Car 14, Lloyd Ruby, out of the race at lap 175 with a broken cam. We'll be watching now in eager anticipation of what happens in these final 10 laps. So with a very bad start for the day, with 11 cars knocked out of the starting field before they even got around turn number one, no one injured. We've come back to have one of the more thrilling 500s, a more unusual 500. Now Clark and Stewart going by here together in front of us. And the wind seems to be picking up considerably from Pat Vadan's green flag that he's holding down there. Eddie Johnson out of his car, but the engine is still running. It's on the grass in the backstretch. A report here from Doug Zink. The closest finish ever was back in 1937. Wilbur Shaw over Ralph Hepburn of two and 1,600 seconds. In 1961, A.J. Foyt beat Eddie Sachs eight and 2,800 seconds. And the greatest winning margin was in 1913 when Jules Goo beat Spencer Weishart by 13 minutes and 8 seconds. In 1927, George Souders beat Earl DeVore by 12 minutes and 2 seconds. And as I think Doug mentioned earlier, George Souders, in 1927, was the last rookie to ever win the 500-mile race. Rookie meaning the first year here. Of course, there are no real rookie drivers running their first race, obviously, at this oval, but rookies for Indianapolis. Well, we've lost Jackie Stewart. Everyone's standing here, and they can't find Stewart. And there's no yellow flag out. I wonder if the car stopped anywhere. Can anybody around the track see it? He's not in the pits, and it should have been around by now. Number three. Yes, Ron, come in. Yes, uh, Jackie Stewart apparently is out. He's going. Uh, he's, the engine has cut clear off. He uh, came by number three. It is in, in over in number four right now, coming to a stop, and perhaps will be down on the grass. Uh, the engine was cut off, and I believe he's just coasting to a stop. Back to you, sir. Oh, what bad luck there for that gentleman, Jackie Stewart, and for Meekham and Bowes. They said this is one of the more unusual races we've ever seen. Now Graham Hill from London takes over the lead. So they can still hold on to the tee back in the garage area in either case, right? I think Graham Hill and uh, Jimmy Clark are running much closer together for, a, for a now first and second place. We should, we can still see a very close finish. Well, that's quite a surprise because Jackie hadn't signified any trouble at all until John noticed that he was pointing toward the rear of his machine a few laps ago. We still didn't see anything, no smoke, no tire problem, but the car was obviously malfunctioning. He must have failed to notice something, and Jackie has uh, now, the car has died on the number four turn. Is he up by you, Jim? Jim Shelton? Yes, he is, Sid. Uh, What's he doing up there? <laughs> he just coasted by here very slowly. He is now standing in the cockpit. The car is still moving. He's out pushing it himself now. And uh, I doubt if he will make it to the pit entrance. But uh, anyway, he's uh, given it the old try with a push there. And now back to you, Sid. Probably an occasional kick, too, I imagine, at this point. Well, Jackie Stewart would have been a great winner here for the 500-mile race. And I'm sure so will Graham Hill if he makes it. And, of course, we know the record of, of Jimmy Clark, who came in to win last year and 
He's put on a splendid performance ever since his first year here. But we'll have to start taking a very close look now at Graham Hill, who has taken over the lead with eight laps to go. Graham Hill driving the American Red Ball special. A Lola Ford. Len? I'll correct that spacing on first to second with Graham Hill over Jim Clark. I think there's about 30 seconds. Uh, sorry that I had that uh, bad information. All right, Len, the leader, Stewart, the drop below the white line with the power off in the third turn on lap 192. Graham Hill took over the lead, and it's a little prophetic. I was just recapping. Actually, I wasn't being prophetic, Len, but I mentioned, remember earlier, that things could happen even though you had the lead, like on the 192nd lap with Bill Vukovic when Rutman took over, and that's what's happened here on lap 192 as Stewart drops out, and someone else takes over this time for him. So Graham Hill from London in car number 24 has taken over the lead, age 38. Passed his driver's test here in 1963 and hasn't been back since. He didn't qualify that year, and he was world champion in 1962. George Bignotti is his chief mechanic. He's been a, Bignotti's been a co-owner and conditioned the two winners here, having been the chief mechanic for A.J. Foyt. Jack Buck listening to us in KMOX in St. Louis, who we lost now, Len. We haven't lost any. We've picked up somebody. Jackie Stewart is very graciously pushing his car into the pits in the north end, pushing his car the same as Parnelli did after the race. I think he wants to end up in, in, the, in the pit area. Well, this is... <laughs> Fellas want to write a book on racing. He could use the script for what happened today, and had he done it prior to the race, no one would have believed him. I wonder how, how many years ago it's been that only eight cars were able to be running at this stage. Well, that's what we have Donald Davidson here for, so we'll bring him in and find... All you have to do is wonder, Len, and Donald comes in and tells us. Here he is right now. A bundle of information. Yes. Did you get that question, Don? Yeah, it was uh, 1951. There was only eight cars running at the end. Six went the distance, and two others were flanked off. Lee uh, Wallet had one of the poorer cars and won it. That's right. I think only about half the car arrived. Most of the stuff dropped off. He dropped off some brakes and I think some shock absorbers and, and he just about arrived with a shell of a car. No no brakes the last 12 laps, I think. Can you recount in your mind, Don, any other races that had very few finishers? Well, there was, uh, in 1912, of course, was, uh, you mentioned Vukovic going 192 laps. In 1912, you did mention earlier Ralph De Palma, who uh, managed to... Uh, went out with uh, one and a half laps to go and pushed, he and his riding mechanic pushed the car around until uh, completing the 199th lap and only 10 cars finished that year. In 1921 there was nine cars finished. Okay Don, thank you. We're just about ready to wind up. We'll call you back for a recap when the race is over if we may. We're getting close to the finish now. We're in the 196th lap and for those keeping charts after 475 miles or 190 laps the speed was 144.398 miles per hour. They picked it up quite well after the slow start. It was 158.67 last year with Jimmy Clark. And the eight cars running at that time at 100, 190 laps of 475 miles were 43 Stewart, 24 Hill, 19 Clark, number three McElreed, 72 Jancock, 94 Mel Kenyon. Doing a great job this year with his infirmity, Mel Kenyon, holding him under sixth place. Number 11, Bobby Unser, and number 88, Jerry Grant, who certainly gets it for persistence today. Number 54, Eddie Johnson, stalled in the backstretch in 195 laps. Eddie Johnson now out of the race as well, and here's Ray Paschke now from the storage floor with some more information for us. This will be our final report, and we'll be pretty busy down there. Uh, right now it's a 30.37 uh, second lead by our... our new champion, I believe. So we'll be on our way down to the final uh, final roundup. Sid, thanks for working with you. Thank you, Ray, for a fine job and a lot of help today. Ray Paschke from the road calculator on the timer's floor, and he said our new champion, but we don't count that till that flag comes down, as you know. But he looks pretty strong right now on the 197th lap, and we'll follow him around on his last lap when he's given the white flag. Ram Hill holding on to first in the American Red Ball special. And the boys at American Red Ball just about gave up on racing. They had the car that Eddie Sachs drove in the year of the tragedy in 1964. And now having come back to last year and again this year, they have the possible winner of this race in just a few more laps. Ram Hill, born in London. His first race was in 1954 in Brands Hatch, United Kingdom Formula 3 race. He was second in the world championships in 63, 64, and 65, and the world's champion in 1962. In 65, he won at Monte Carlo and Watkins Glen. At 62, he won at Silverstone. 
and 63 have won at Monaco in the U.S. Grand Prix. He's won the Dutch Grand Prix, the German, the Italian, the South African, and the Aintree 200. He was a mechanic, 1954 to 57, and uh, has driven for Porsche and for BRM and other companies. His wife's name is Betty, Bridget, six-year-old daughter, and Damon, four-year-old son. Graham is 36, six feet tall, and weighs 175. Graham Hill getting set to come into victory lane. Granatelli is protesting. He says Clark is leading Stewart, Clark's uh, pit time. Come back in here, Ray, and what's this you're giving me through the window? I didn't expect to be back, but yes. we just had a report that Granatelli is going to protest the race, and of course we'll have our official uh, reports ground out all night long to confirm uh, who we think the real winner is. What, what's the question based on? The uh, Granatelli claims that Clark is in the lead and has claimed this for about the last 10 minutes, but they just now came up to the timing and scoring floor and ask us not to give out any checkered flags, but of course, we go according to the records. All right, Ray, well, that'll make this again. We said the wildest day ever, and that will certainly add to it if there's a protest in the winter. But Pat Bedan has the white flag out, and we'll go by what's going on down here as it happens. The white flag is out now for number 24. We'll watch for it and follow him around for the final lap and then into victory lane for the ceremony. The officials who decide this race are down on the floor. The tapes... We'll make it official by tomorrow morning or one floor beneath us. The white flag is out. The card is being held. And there's the white flag for Graham Hill in the American Red Ball Special. Pick him up on turn number one, Mike Ahern. And here he is in turn number one. Graham Hill coming around like he's been traveling this turn all afternoon. After he's on tracks smoothly into the short shoot. Turn number two in Honey Bell. And we pick him up now. We sight Graham Hill, former world driving champion. There he goes through turn two as he heads up the backstretch with apparently just one lap to go, Doug Zink. All right, thank you, Howdy, and here he comes past the halfway point on the backstretch, running all alone. Three here, and Ron Carroll. And I pick him up, Doug. Here he comes into turn number three. He passes me right now. Now out of number three, into the short shoot, and he'll be coming over to you, Jim Shelvin. Ronnie's right here. Handsome man with a beautiful car, Graham Hill in 24. Number 24, white, red, trim, with oil smudges and dollar signs, and here's Sid Collins. Here he comes down the main stretch, and there's the checkered flag for Graham Hill, winner of the Golden Anniversary Indianapolis 500-mile race. Car number 24, the American Red Ball Special. I will check for the checkered flag for the other finishers. And Ryan and John, you can keep a close tab on there for me. And we'll pick up Lou Palmer in Victory Lane to interview Graham and the crew as they come in. Graham Hill from London, England. There goes Jerry Grant. He's still out there fighting it today in number 88. Running in last place. Of those remaining, that is. Once the race got underway, we really didn't have it. There's the check and flag now for our second place finisher, Jimmy Clark. However, as Ray Paschke told us, Granatelli, Andy Granatelli in the SVP company is uh, protesting this finish. And our third place finisher was number three, Jim McElroy. And there's the crew running down to pick up their cars. Very seal fast crew running down. A rookie here, starting in 15th position, Graham Hill, has won the 50th running of the 500. The first time a rookie has won since 1927, when George Sauters did it, and Dan Gurney running over and slapping the crew on the back as they run past him. Dan Gurney has watched uh, the entire race today. He bounced out in the first lap, and there's Jackie Stewart walking by, directly down the front of us. Graham Hill moving down now toward Victory Lane. We'll have the finish for you when we come back for the wrap-up of the broadcast. But before that, let's pick up Lou Palmer as we move into victory lane. Graham Hill coming down to the very end of the pit area and ready to make his turn. Pick it up, Lou. And we're here in victory lane. Graham Hill missed the pit turn, but he's got plenty of maneuverability left. Firing it up, moving toward us now. Graham Hill in the number 24 entry. The American Red Ball being pushed on in on this small plot of grass where all of the honor deserving him will be accorded him. Moving in tightly now, he's tied up against the photographer's stand. The final jazzing of the engine now puts it Graham Hill, our winner. The team congratulating Graham Hill, 37 years old, from London, England, the former world driving champion, now a rookie champion right here in Indianapolis. The George Bignotti crowding to him now. 
And we're moving forward through the crowd as our 500 Festival Queen, Sue Helen Harrison, makes also presentation of award here. And there's the kiss for Graham Hill. Graham Hill, Sue Helen Harrison, and a great congratulations going up to him. Unbuckling the helmet now, being offered a bottle of milk, and we've got a quite tight little group right around this entry at the moment. We'll get forward to Graham in just a moment, as soon as he's able to hear when he has the helmet off, and we'll be on our way. The laurel wreath placed around his neck. Sue, how did you enjoy today's race? Exciting. Amazing race. Wonderful. It, it was phenomenal. It was indeed. And we'll move into Graham Hill here and talk with him in just a moment. As soon as the helmet is off and he can settle. A wave to the photographer stand by Graham Hill. We can, can you hear us yet, Graham? Not yet. We'll wait just a bit. Handing, handing it out now, taking the gloves off and the plugs out of the ears. And we'll be with Graham Hill in just a moment. George Bignotti has moved in and out once again. A hand being proffered him. And Graham, I think they'd like you to have a bus one more time with Sue Helen Harrison, our 500 festival queen. <laughs> there we are. <laughs> there we are. Gentlemen, there we are. Graham, we congratulate you thoroughly. In London, they're able to hear you right now at this moment. What have you to say? You know, rookies don't win here. Uh, yeah, well, um, I'm rather surprised to have won, but uh, naturally I'm very pleased to have done so. Not a surprise. An excellent run and a fine follow-up to that third at Monaco. Can we expect you back here at the 500? Uh, yes, I expect so if I get invited. Very, you know who was running number two when we finished this run today? No, I have no idea. Uh, Jimmy Clark, I believe, running second to you. Well, I'm very impressed and uh, I th the car ran beautifully. I had a very steady run and pretty uneventful, except for the uh, mishaps earlier on. This hustle-bustle on the first lap, uh, how deeply involved in that were you? Well, uh, I didn't get involved, but uh, I seemed to be in the middle of it. Um, I was busy trying to avoid the cars and the wheels and the half shafts and various other bits that were flying around. I thought I was being bombed, in fact. <laughs> so you were truly in the center of this uh, ten-car spa up here? Well, it would appear so. I was very fortunate. Graham, what are your plans now? Back to the Grand Prix circuit? Uh, uh, yeah, I've got to go back to test the BRM fairly shortly. Very good. And uh, the Meekum Racing Team. Thank you, George. Thank you, Dan. Oh, no. Dan Gurney congratulating him. And again, Sue Helen Harrison, the queen. Here's Jackie Stewart. Jackie, a phenomenal run today. It was What was it that happened to you at the very end? Uh, well, the engine broke in the biggest possible way. It, uh, wow. Did you pretty, have, pretty big bang. Did you have any indication trouble was coming on? Yes, for about uh, ten laps. Well, congratulations on a magnificent run in any event. And here's Graham. I'm sure you want to say a few words to him. Uh, I've said hello. <laughs> Jackie over here. Graham Hill, Jackie Stewart has arrived to tender his congratulations. We noticed Colin Chapman and the Team Lotus group down here also congratulating them. Here is uh, Jimmy Clark. Jimmy, congratulations on your number two position. That was a very good run, Jim. Congratulations on the number two. And we're going now to try and back out here and find... Here's George Bignotti. George, let's see if we can work our way over to him. Congratulations, George, on an excellent set. We congratulate you thoroughly. Indeed, I, I believe they're uh, a witness to this in London at this moment. Uh, what have you to say? That, one, that was a phenomenal run. You had it, and then you got it back. Yes, uh, we had uh, Jackie uh, running there. He drove very hard, even though the track was uh, very slippery, and he had quite a bit of a uh, tussle with McCluskey. He had the uh, race in the bag, and uh, his oil pressure started to go out and he was very cautious and he shut the engine off and parked the car. I guess uh, if I was driving, I'd have probably blew the engine up <laughs> at that shape, but uh, he was very uh, good about it and I'm very sorry for him because he drove so hard all day. Graham did a fine job and uh, uh, our pit work wasn't too bad. Uh, Jackie killed his engine, but and he made an extra stop for uh, glasses, you know, which uh, cost him time, so he that was been, actually the cause of that stop, yeah, glasses? Just glasses. What, what had happened? Well, they broke over on the... Uh, 
in this uh, number one uh, problem. Very good. Congratulations again. And I would like very much to be able to find Mr. John Meekham here in the crowd, but I'm uh, afraid he has been overwhelmed. We're looking for John right now, and let's see if the cord will extend all the way over to this press car as they're putting Graham Hill aboard now for one final ride around this track. Uh, are we going to be able to get a word with John Meekham here before they're on the way? Apparently not. And so I think this is the ceremony. The car, the Borg Warner Trophy, awaiting here quietly now. Graham Hill's return as they are about to take to the track in the red pace car that will be Graham's. And conclusion of this race, probably the most spectacular we have seen here in years. A well-won race by Graham Hill. And personal congratulations from the man who had been leading, Jackie Stewart, and the number two finisher, Jimmy Clark. We return you now to control. Those were the victory lane ceremonies with Graham Hill. We'll be back in just one minute. Back here in the master control tower at Indianapolis once again, we've had the interview with the winner and the victory lane activity. And uh, Len Sutton here and John DeCamp and I will now talk a bit and recap this race. We've heard no further about the suggested protest that uh, Ray Paschke told us about. The checker flag was given to the winner at 3.45 p.m. Indianapolis time. It's now five minutes, 15 seconds until four. The yellow light was on for a total of 41 minutes. And perhaps among the three of us here, we can decipher the final standings unofficially then. Can Unof start? Unofficially, I would say that it, that it is Graham Hill, Jimmy Clark, Jim McElreath, Gordon Johncock. That's the first four places. Now, after that, uh, we would have the car number 94 uh, finishing in the next position, except that Jackie Stewart, car number 43, because of, of leading the race, he had a very, very good chance of finishing more laps than the fifth car to finish the, uh, to cross the finish line. So fifth place would be very much in contention. It could either be uh, Jackie Stewart, number 43, or number 94. Uh, John, would you like to comment on that? Well, Lynn, I was going to carry you about three places even farther than you just mentioned. I think that because car 94, Mel Kenyon, Car 54, Eddie Johnson, car 11, Bobby Unser, and car 88, Jerry Grant had been running slow laps for really quite a while. Plus, uh, Grant had uh, several long pit stops, at least two long pit stops. I think perhaps uh, Jackson Stewart could be as high as fifth place in this race, and that would automatically move Kenyon, Johnson, Bobby Unser, and Jerry Grant down one notch, making Grant wind up in ninth, uh, Unser in eighth, Johnson in seventh, and Kenyon in sixth. This is just my, my guess. I would believe that that would be very accurate. Now, if I may muddy the waters further, <laughs> I have an unofficial report from a runner from the timer's floor, and this is just unofficial. See how this compares with you, gentlemen. 24, a winner, Hill, 19, Jimmy Clark, second, number three, McElroy, third, 72, Gordon Johncock, fourth, 94, Mel Kenyon, fifth, 43, Jackie Stewart, sixth, 54, Eddie Johnson, 7th. Number 6, Jerry Leonard, 8th. Number 11, Unser, 9th. That's uh, Bobby Unser. And number 88, Jerry Grant, 10th. And that's the unofficial standing. 